time I ask. So we have Pastor Larry Roberts, senior in the building, and also music extraordinaire. Genius. Yes. Curtis Lindsay. We have two music extraordinaires with us here, songwriters, and they have traveled and performed, sang with, written for everything with so many artists across the country. And it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. We have Pastor Larry Roberts here. So glad to have you. Thank you for having me here on tonight, too. Oh, I so am excited. I'm excited that you are here. And Curtis, thank you for joining oh, thank us thank you too. tracy really appreciate you having us no problem and we have them here this is a part of our independent artist segment and they are here because they have some special news great news they want to share also with some great new music on this evening and pastor larry roberts just so you all know he has been doing music since the age of four yes correct yes absolutely you want to share with us five generations my grandmother my aunt me my children and my grandchildren uh, in the projects, little old boy running around. Grandma used to take me to Lion and Healy music. Y'all, old new school don't know nothing about Lion and Healy school of music. And after she take her lessons, I get down there and start playing the lessons that she supposed to have played. And the other folks sang, the other folks would just be amazed in it all. I would get down there and be able to play that organ and piano. Oh, wow, at four years old. At four years old, yes. Yes, it was awesome. So, Curtis, did he teach you as well? Oh, uh, he taught me some hymns. Some hymns. <laughs> Were you four, Curtis? Uh, I, I started when I was 11. 11? Okay, so not quite yes. four. So you've been doing this a long time, Pastor, and many people yes. definitely know about the history, the leg rich legacy that you have you. Uh, laid here in Chicago, and we applaud you for that. Can we have an applause <laughs> Thank you. for him? Thank I'm you. clapping by myself. For some reason, I clap by myself every week. Uh, I'm <laughs> applause so but we we applaud you for that Thank you. and so we're here also because you all have some great news uh regarding an upcoming concert and release this month yes well first of all i just got like to go back I, when god put curtis this is my son as well to adopt it my oldest son brought curtis to the church when i first started pastor so curtis been along for the whole ride of the 15 years that god have allowed me to pastor and I've been to, I was the minister of music for 38 years the wow. church is 55 and I got 52 of the 55 years I was a kid when I first and met your mom back yes, then too she did. so I'm telling our <laughs> age oh yes <laughs> well you did. told yours well, how you yeah, were, so. so that kind of that, that messed it up a little yes, bit yes yes but we have been in church all our life and it's just been a wonderful ride and God allowed me the opportunity to work with some great artists with got us to the platform where we are now I started writing in 1975. Wow! Started wow. writing and recording. Do you what? Do you remember this first song that you wrote? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We wrote uh, the song that we worked on was "Serving God Will Pay Off." Uh, after a while, and then I did a, uh, I took just a closer walk with thee and rearranged that. We were kind of the trendsetters in breaking those parts up. Oh, yes, we were the okay. trendsetters. If you go back in the '70s, we mm -hmm. start breaking the parts up: altos, sopranos, and tenors, and then a few other songs that I wrote on there as well too. So the the, the road had been real good on the label that we were on back in the day with Savoy mm -hmm. Records. Sa Savoy Records. Savoy Records. Right? I remember. I call Savoy it the Savoy the Savoy Syndrome days. Savoy. There were there were a lot of cho choirs <laughs> and all churches the top across yes, the country. Yes, were on Savoy. You're yes, so right. That's yes. so true. Our, uh, Christian Tabernacle, the church that absolutely, I went absolutely. to as a child, they absolutely, were on Savoy. Right. So Savoy, they did, they they gave a lot of people yes, a lot of opportunities. Did. A great platform. A lot of yes. opportunities. So it's really good. You said four years old. You said fifty-two years of it. Yes. The church and writing, and now we're at two thousand seventeen. And Curtis, you said Curtis has been with you said fifteen years. Yes, the whole ride. And then what Curtis have done, he took it off into a. He shifted the paradigm mm -hmm. on the music that we wrote and just put a brand new spin on it. And I think everybody's going to be excited. When I heard it, I got excited. So I know when, when we first came out with, are you ready? Are you? It was a catchy tune. Mm -hmm. But Curtis have taken the music and my sons and them, they have taken the music to another whole level. So it's going to be great. It's going to give us a brand new start, a new beginning. Because you're probably really happy when you hear the, now people do the medley of the old, no, I, say old school, but are you ready is a part of that medley that a lot of choirs sing. Yes, yes. They sing. Yes, and it's, it's, it's absolutely. people, and for those who've never heard it, they're able to hear it because maybe their choir, their favorite choir absolutely, is singing it. Absolutely. 
well, when I heard it and Curtis, he mentioned it to me, I'm very familiar with the song. Yes. Um, and I was excited to hear it. And I'm glad that you guys are here. And But you got to share with me what's going on with the release. When is the when is the release? Well, my, my, my son, he's going to chime in on this as well. Too. Come um, on, so son. we're going to do the, the 55th year church anniversary mm -hmm. and the single release on this um, October 29th. October at, 29th. Yeah, Sunday, October 29th at Trinity All Nations at 3.30 p.m. So everybody here, that's October 29th at Trinity All Nations Church. And the address 9, is? 9600 South Vincennes in Chicago. And you said 3.30? Yep. Three, please be there. 3.30 p.m. That's October 29th. Trinity All, Trinity All Nations, Pastor Larry Roberts Sr. And you guys want to set up the single? Are you ready? Yeah, but let, let me go back before yes. we do that because i got to give homage to our founder and pastor, the great late Dr. Doris Evelyn Davis. Mm -hmm. The reason that where I am now is because she came over and got me and asked my mom if I could play for the church at the age of 13. So that's why I'm here today. So I always give credit to where credit is due and may yes. she rest in peace. Yes. And because we, we, we are very, we very um, have to be intentional when we talk about people who have built a legacy. Absolutely. Um, and those who continue to carry it on. We can't forget about Absolutely. anybody because Absolutely. the, the, the a foundation you're standing on now, That's someone right. had to put it there, had to build it, and then it, it just goes for higher and higher and higher. So can we go ahead and set up the new single? Well, not new single, but we all know the song, Are You Ready? But we have, yes. we're, we're releasing it again. And the single is, Curtis? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you all ready? I'm ready. So, this, again, this is Pastor Larry Roberts with Trinity All Nations Church. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? On Tabernacle Radio, on the Artist Stage Radio Show.
and give God some praise. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. That, that was awesome. Which I don't. You all probably weren't able to see it, but Pastor Roberts turned around and said, "Curtis did that. He yes, did that. yes. <laughs> he put that music together. He did. Yes. And I said, when I heard, it, I said, "Wow." He did. Let, let, let me say this. Let me say this, and mm-hmm. I have to be honest. I had a moment because they started changing up. You know the way that I had put the music to it, mm-hmm. and Curtis and my son say. Dad, let us do this. We got to get to the millennials. <laughs> you did your thing. It was close to 40 years ago now. Uh-huh. And it was popping in. So I know it's going to either pop, pop now. Right. And I just sit back and I sat back and I said, come on, guys. And they do it. And when I heard it, I said, oh, man, are you serious? So you have to just step back for a second and, and let, and let them do their thing. Yes, yes. And they did. Yes, they Can did. Can we give man. Curtis an applause? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I just a genius. Yes. <laughs> Very good, Curtis. Curtis, are you excited about uh, the release of the oh, single? Absolutely, I am. You're excited because this this is a song, as I said, that, that has been sung. You said over 40 years, and also it, we hear it. You all, if you go to different musicals, you'll say that's the song. Okay, this is who wrote it. Thank if you, you didn't yes, know, yes. Pastor Larry Roberts Senior is the writer of that song. The Lord blessed, and it's in the hymnal book. Total wow. praise hymnal book. Now that I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know. Now it that's either. an industry update. That is a music industry update. I didn't know it either until one of my friends told me. Because back in the day, let me say this, and I'm glad that Curtis is here now. Back in the day, if you didn't know the music industry, they were not going to tell you. No, they had all of my rights. Oh wow! I didn't know anything, but guess what? My son got me hooked up with my publishing. Very good. My See, you all are you all are learning. Back for me. You're learning how imp- how important it is. It's <laughs> yes, very important. To know the mechanics of music. Absolutely. Well, since you all you know you on the artist stage radio show, so this is where we talk about things that go on yes, with artists. Yes. I don't know if you know what you walked into, all right. but you are now you have all now right. entered into <laughs> what happens with artists when they are on the stage. Yes. yes. So now you all are on the stage okay. with me. Right. So last week we dealt with a few things. We talked about some things that may happen on the stage with, I won't bring it up, we talked about if the drum track stops and the, the MD forgets the loop. But this week what we're talking about is as if you're the artist and you have a 30, 45-minute set, you've been paid your half of your honorarium and you, you're walking literally on the first step on the stage. Your band is already up there. The background singers, they're there, and you're walking up, and the promoter or your manager runs and taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, actually the promoter says, you know what? Um, we're so sorry, but we're not going to have the other half of your honorarium to another 30 days, maybe 30 to 60 days. So, and this happens. I've seen it happen. Yes. I know it happens. Um, on the stage. I mean, that's literally on the stage. The question is, how do you respond? Do you walk off the stage? And I've seen people do that too. Um, or do you continue? Do you get up there and now you go, and I've seen this happen. You get on the mic, you're going to tell it and go off on people and kind of subliminally tell them what's happening. Or I've seen people do things where they'll sing a whole nother set of songs that they feel, I don't know, that they don't want to give their new music. Or do you walk on stage and you continue? You may have patience. I talked about last week about processing things, and that takes time. That takes discipline and practice. Do you actually, you know, continue with the set, knowing that the half of your money um, is not going to be paid? Maybe it's another 30 or 60 days. You guys have any thoughts on how you should respond with being on the stage? I'm going to let Curtis go on this one first, and then I'm going to give my input on it. I really think it's levels, though. Mm -hmm. Um, As a new artist, you should be grateful that you are getting the honorarium. Okay. In my opinion, um, it's, this is gospel music, mm-hmm. you know. So depending on the situation, too, like if it's a a concert where they're selling tickets and all this stuff, but if it's like a musical, and I just feel like just give back to God. I mean, I'm a give giver. That's that's mm-hmm. just me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have been in situations where the artist will not perform. Yeah, I won't say the artist's name, but no, we're not because you know, it's, it's happened. I've been in a situation where the artist wouldn't perform, and there've been in situations after that, then they cancel our hotel rooms. You know, so wow. it's it's a tricky situation. Mm-hmm. Pastor Roberts. Well, my experience, my experience, we went to Philadelphia. We were scheduled to perform, 
and the person that we was performing with, you know, we, we worked with a lot of people. We worked with the Reverend James Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Background, we worked with Albertina, background. Mm -hmm. And when we got there, we didn't get paid. So it was the option whether we were going to back, do what we supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get paid. So we're in Philadelphia. So I said, I told her, I, <laughs> I told the group, I said, you all, I said, come on. I said, let's go do what God has commissioned us to do. Yes, Bible says money answers all things. So if the money's not there, the ministry is there. And we were blessed with the ministry because mm -hmm. we had records and the people bought our records out. Right. So we was able to, but a lot of times we didn't get what was promised to us mm -hmm. in the day. But I still continue to go on and do the gift that God had given to me. The Bible says your gift will make room for you and place you before great men. Right. It your does. character will carry you out of the presence of great men. People won't want to be bothered with you. That's I don't true. care how gifted and good you are. That's true. That's true. So, so, that, it, so it sounds like Curtis mentioned he's a giver. And he said yes, just we're doing. He absolutely. Made, both of you all make great statements. We're singing about Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And we're absolutely. doing gospel music. And, of course, that's, the character and integrity should go on both ends. Sometimes it doesn't when it comes to honorariums and money. But, again, we have to go back to, I mentioned at the top of the show, don't just be but become spiritually healthy. Become spiritually, he spiritually healthy so when moments like these arise and trust me it's not easy it's it's not easy you just don't let me pull my bible out and pray you no, know sometimes no. it doesn't happen like that but trust me god will continue to he will test you or you will place yourself you'll become part of moments where you'll be tested and your patience will be tested and i talked about the scripture in first colossians um and it said hopefully that you will have patience and endurance for situations like this so again being on the stage the money's not there you walked on the stage everybody's there you're not getting your money to 60 days from now so now what do we do and they're saying just go ahead and keep singing. So that's what I would <laughs> that's, do. That's what they're saying, everybody. And you know what? I, I agree with them. Um, and also on the practical side, after you get off the stage, now don't go cussing people out and, um, you know, just whatever you deal with in your head, that's, that's on you. But then it's time to maybe the other part is how do you address the promoter? You know, do you talk? How do you talk to them? If you know you may struggle with uh, confrontation or talking to people. Just go sit down for a little while, gather yourself, get some, some um, quiet music, calm yourself down. And re I can't really tell you what to say in that moment because those are situations that really every moment is different and you have to assess the moment as they come. But get quiet, try your best, and process things as to how you're going to speak to them and then let it, handle the business side of it with re if, you, if you receive the money later. But in the moment is what we're talking about. What do you do? Do you continue to sing or do you just walk off? And so what we're saying is we're going we're gonna to still keep singing about yeah, Jesus. I right? know some folks, we, we went and bus loads and... They didn't get their money. They walked right on out the door. But we sang. Yeah. And it, it like happens. A, it happens. It happens. And, and let's keep it real. It's a business. It's a yes. business. You sign contracts and things. But we just never blew it overboard. We because you don't. Right. You never know later on. Who's in the audience. Exactly. And, yeah, you never exactly. know. Exactly. Right. And the seeds that you're sowing um, now, God, God has you. The biggest part and my biggest tip right now is check your heart and check your motives to make sure that you're good. So that you never know what may happen once you're finished with the 30 minute set or the 45 minute set. You never know what may, may be on the other side of that. So it's a it's a process. But again, this is the Artist Stage Radio Show. Yes. We're talking about what goes on before the stage, on the stage. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what happens after the stage. But now we're going to go to the song by Dietrich Hatton and Hill City Worship, A Billion People Saying Jesus. <laughs>
This is Tracy Williamson with the art, on the Artist Stage Radio Show on Tabernacle Radio. Hopefully you're listening online or you're checking us out on Facebook Live. And we don't have the Periscope thing going, but we have Facebook Live. I don't have Snapchat either. Maybe I'll get Snapchat. But y'all got to laugh at my jokes if y'all going to be here. Okay, all right. <laughs> no, that really wasn't a, <laughs> that wasn't a joke. That wasn't a joke. It wasn't funny. Uh, but I am grateful that you guys are here because last week I was really clapping by myself. And, you know, <laughs> now, you know, y'all well, can clap. Thank you. Clap. Thank you. Yeah. We got three claps. So, you know. But we had those are authentic claps, you know, people's real hands clapping. But thank you all for tuning in. We have Pastor Larry Roberts Sr. in here with us and also Curtis Lindsay. And they've been talking about they talked about their new single, which is actually a re release of um, his hit song, Are You Ready for yes. the Coming of the Lord? October 29th. They will be at Pastor Robert's Church, Trinity All Nations Church, October 29th, 3.30 p.m., where they will be singing this song and many more songs from their upcoming release. And again, this is the Artist Stage radio show. We were talking about what happens on the stage when the people don't have your money and things are funny and you don't think it's funny. And how do you respond when they don't have your money? But we, we also stated we are singing gospel music. And I want to make this point to all artists. Two things to remember. And it's, this is really true. The music industry, I'm sorry, is not black and white. It's really not. And I'm not talking about color, skin color. I'm talking about it's not black and white. We wish it was, but there it is gray. It's a, gray, it's a lot of gray areas in the music industry. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't operate in integrity Absolutely. and have character. And also, we are, uh, we are a part of the genre of gospel, the gospel music genre. So we're singing about Jesus Christ, which makes us set apart. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. And when you sign up to sing for Jesus... I'm telling you, there's some things that you have to think about that you probably wouldn't have to think about if you was not singing for Jesus Christ. I mean, of course, we want to operate and have him proper character and integrity, but we're also thinking about him and what would Jesus do? And that's just something we have to constantly yes. keep, keep on our mind. And I want to quickly go to our, our weekly Build Before You Brand tip. And this is something I'm going to touch on 
just about every week. This week, build before you brand. Because a lot of people ask me, what does that mean? And I've, I've had some very good coaching with this <laughs> for myself. And a lot of this is coming from wisdom and experience with building before you brand. So artists, what, here's your tip for this week. Build before you brand. Set some time aside and map out um, over maybe two or three months. Pick two to three venues, churches, wherever you feel that you would like to connect with to sing your music and set small goals and try to attain those by visiting those churches. Just spend, uh, just stretch it out for two or three months. Reach out to them. Don't always depend on your so-called booking manager or the person that you feel has your back or your team. You connect with these venues, these churches, the people, so they get to know you. Absolutely. And also remember, Absolutely. if you're reaching out to them, that means they're not asking for you. So don't come off as if, you know, they are, you know, they need you or they just got to have you there. They're, you're requesting to be in the presence of, you know, whether it's a, a, a church or event. You're asking to present your music there. So res be respectful. You know, don't feel like, you know, they got to have all these things set up for you when you come and they got to give you a certain amount of money. You're asking them. So that is your tip, your bill before you brand tip. Set time aside over two or three or set time aside to write this down to uh, map out over at least two or three months two to three venues churches places you can connect with so you can share your music and don't make it just all within the city that you live in That's right. go out if you live in Chicago hit up Detroit or Ohio Indiana if you don't have the funds to tr travel very far that trust me I've been up and down 65 and those highways many times and it's a two or three hour drive and if you have the funds for it just set aside time on the weekend after your regular work day and connect with those places that is a part of building before you brand you want to know why so you can see if they like your music that's just what it boils down to are you of interest to them before you decide you want to force music on people see that's if right. they like it first so that's the build before you brand tip on the artist stage radio show and again we have pastor larry roberts senior and curtis Lindsay. and guess what you guys are also here for the next part of the stage but before we go to the next part of the, the stage, next part of the, stage. <laughs> the next part of the stage, we're going to go to Fred Hammond with They That Wait. This promise, understand God has not forgotten you. When times get tough, you can look up to heaven and encourage yourself and say,
that was Fred Hammond and wait on the Lord. I think we're still dealing with that patience. He's talking about wait on the Lord. So that will that will require a little patience and endurance. A lot of patience. Yes, (laughs) a lot lot of patience. And again, as I said earlier, being an artist, it does. It requires a lot of patience and endurance and thick skin. You got to have some thick skin because you're gonna hear a lot of yeses and noes. Trust me, you're gonna hear both. But you got to keep it moving. I always like to say, if, if it can't be done this way, I'm going to figure out another way. Another way in the right season and in the will of God, not out of his will. So we're back again on the Artist Stage Radio Show. I'm Tracy Williamson, and in the house we have Pastor Larry Roberts Sr. and Curtis Lindsay, two huge music extraordinaires from Chicago, Chi-Town. Everybody's born and raised here, right? Chi-Town. Yep. Cabrini Green out to be Wells. The projects. Uh, I can't really say that, but you know, we're going to let him rest. The Lord have moved us up to the east side, though. He moved on up. I, I can't, can you, I can't really, that's not my testimony. Though. That's I, all that's right. He's been testimony. good to us. Is it your testimony, Curtis? Yes. Curtis, is that your testimony? I mean, I grew up in L Town, Division of Law. See what I'm okay. saying? So I didn't move to the south side of 2002. Oh, okay. Well, I'm from the south side. I, I lived in... Um, <laughs> Little guy is getting proper now. I'm from the no, south no. side. I lived like near High Park as yeah, a child yeah, and a couple really. of other places. So, yeah. <laughs> not really. But but again, we're here on the Artist Stage Radio Show. We've been talking about some great things, as dealing with uh, the things that artists go through, the different stages that you're on. At the top of the show, we dealt with before the stage, and we said, are you ready to grow up in front of the world for them to see your life? Uh, depending on what age, even at a later age, you know, they're seeing what you're doing and you've given them access to that. So be careful sometimes, artists, how we respond to the people on social media. Because when we put the things out there, we're saying, hey, this is me. So, you know, they kind of have a right to say some things. But sometimes we respond a little differently. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, just understand you have given your given them access to your life. That's what we talked about at the top of the show on the stage. We dealt with what happens when you uh, don't get your money. And you may not get your money for another 60 days. And the promoter tells you that literally when you're walking on the stage. But we're saying we are um, Christ representers and we're singing about Jesus Christ and uh, pushing his message to the world and to the masses. So we're going to try to operate like him and have a little patience and still seeing the set that we gave the promoter, even though they want to give us our money. So and now we're going to jump right to what happens. Some things that happen off the stage last week I dealt with finances and what are you doing with the money after you leave the stage are you just throwing it in a bag are you know you and the background singer you guys just kind of divvying it up and figuring out who's gonna eat here at McDonald's Waffle House whatever what are you doing with the money I want to still stay there dealing with finances um, but dealing with once you get home are you investing this money and how are you investing the money are you putting it back into your music, which could be good or bad? It depends. Or are you just, you know, just buying up things? I would highly suggest that you do um, just kind of do a, a review and look at what has happened. Uh, maybe if it's been 30 days with you being out on the road and maybe your music is on iTunes. Look at how many downloads you've had. Have you spent a lot of money so far investing in marketing to, into some things? Are you looking for a return right now before you quickly put the money back in? Let's see what has been made. That's for those who are independent artists. Um, and the same goes for if you're signed to a label. Just don't assume that the label, they're handling everything. You need to be looking at those reports and seeing what's happening with the finances. So we're talking about what happens off the stage with the money. If you don't have a, a nine to five job, I highly suggest to invest into a retirement fund. Go to your local bank, whatever bank you bank with, and speak to them about uh, a retirement fund, an IRA. Look into that for you, yourself and your family and also life insurance policies. If you don't have the everyday nine to five job, what are you doing with that money? Um, it's not always, of course, I did last week. I spoke on make sure you're paying those musicians and your singers on time. Don't leave them hanging where they're trying to figure out whether if you're going to pay them next month, two months from now. You just don't want that type of uh, conversation going on about you and your situation and the money. So what are you doing with the money? We're probably going to talk about money for a few weeks because I think it's really important to know what are you doing off the stage with your finances. And I also said last week, get a financial coach, a financial, uh, some financial help. To, if you're not good with money, just be honest with yourself about that. But I, like I said, take do an assessment of have, how many downloads have you had with that single or that project. 
have you made a profit? If not, that's fine. You probably only had the single out for 30 days. You know, that's okay. M many people may not know about it. But before you just throw all the money back into it again, look and see, okay, what what can we do with the money this time? Maybe we should put it put it towards touring versus buying a lot of uh, photos and um web advertisements maybe we should put it into maybe doing a remake of the song if the song isn't doing well right now so those are just a, a few ideas um, and we're going to dig deeper into that as we go on every Tuesday on our artist stage radio show but again that's what we're talking about off the stage do you guys have any thoughts about money um, and finances off the stage once the money once you got that check from the from the promoter well let me say, mine is short. Back in the day, it wasn't that much money. So <laughs> <laughs> what, what they're getting now, I mean, we're talking a couple of thousand dollars back in the day. And, so, mm -hmm. and I worked, too. I had a regular job. I right. had a family. I started my family early. Mm -hmm. So the, and then the little money that we was getting, we would bring it back to the church. Mm -hmm. So that that's as far as I go right there. It was a couple of thousand dollars now. It has led to single artists now. It is their livelihood. And yes, what you're saying. So Curtis can talk about that as well too, because this mm -hmm. is his livelihood. So Curtis, so I mean, for me, mm -hmm. my experience now being an adult, an adult. <laughs> in the music, <laughs> um, we we have slow seasons, mm -hmm. you know. So like now we picking up our slow season for the winter season. So I pretty much now um, don't depend on my gig money as mm -hmm. a living anymore. I try to save that much as I can mm -hmm. and I'll provide for my family. So he's saying saving money, and that's that's true. Because would you agree that just you said slow seasons that the music industry is up and down? It's Absolutely. not you don't. It's not a, a type of industry where, of course, we know we just can't look in the newspaper and pick a job uh, for the music industry. But it it's fickle. <laughs> I'll say that music changes today. Somebody could be number one today. They could be number ten yeah, next week. Right. So then that goes for the artists and the industry executives. So he made a good point. Save your money. Save the money. So that's just a few things well, regarding. Let, let, mm -hmm. me say, let me say this because see, back in the day when we were musicians, it was twenty five dollars. Wow, twenty five. It's seventy five dollars. Not a pair of diamond And God bless our ministry. I'm gonna take care of Curtis. Oh, bless you. I'm gonna take care <laughs> of my Curtis son. Curtis is happy about that. You hear me? I'm gonna take care of my son. The fruit don't fall too far from the tree. So, Curtis, that means that you're doing you right by some people, too, right? Radio. Yeah, absolutely. We know Curtis and Lindsay. We yes, know he has yes, so many yes. events that he does. Um, you have the you have come to choir. Yes. A director. Yep. Tribute to the Foundation, um, which is October t Friday, October 27th at 730 at Trinity as mm -hmm. well. Uh, we're honoring a few people as it's a lot of people, but Ludella Evans, Lavonia Whitley, um, Dexter Walker, Kenny Lewis, um, Ricky Dillard. That's the name of a few. Mm -hmm. And um we're just paying homage to these um, choir directors, and it's a free event. You know, I advise everybody to get there, you know, at least an hour before the event because it's we're only seat five hundred. It's standing room only <laughs> every year, yeah. so this is th this is my third one. It's actually um, uh, Dio Dwayne Bradford. He he, you know, partnered with well, I partnered with him on it. So mm -hmm. just want to give back.